It's time now for our focus report. This Saturday, Gabon will be electing its next president in a one-round vote. Eleven candidates were initially in the running, among them incumbent president Ali Bongo Odimba and opposition leader Jean Ping, who now enjoys the backing of most of his former rivals. Now, today's report takes us to Gabon's business hub, Borgenti, where the months-long oil crisis is taking its toll. An opposition bastion, the city is also known as a hotspot for post-electoral clashes, with previous victories by Ali Bongo and his late father, Omar Bongo, sparking violent dissent among some local residents, often the poverty-stricken youth. Now, Patrick Fondio and Mathieu Mondoulet send us this report. The oil tankers that once filled the Bay of Port Gentil are nowhere to be seen. Gabon's economic capital has been shaken to the core by the global fall in oil prices. Offshore platforms that used to be based out at sea have been towed back to shallow waters, where they'll stay until prices pick up again. Stick close to that boat when entering the fishing harbour, really close, because there's a wreck over there. Théophile Mbomba is the manager of an underwater construction company. His firm is just one among many struggling to stay afloat, hit by falling demand in the oil industry. Look at our bay. There are almost no ships mooring here. It's terrible. No ships means no work. If boats were mooring here as usual, I'd have hulls to maintain and repair. There would be so much work to do. But right now, here in Port Gentil, the situation is very difficult. Out of the 100 people who currently work for Théophile, 90 of them have already been temporarily laid off. I had to cut down wages. When our company gets paid for the little work we still have to do, I try to hand out enough money for our workers' families to get by. More than two and a half thousand workers in the petrol industry have suddenly found themselves without work. Steve and Jean-Louis lost their jobs overnight. They were forced to find new employment in a city known for its expensive cost of living. I opened the mini market and I'm now a shopkeeper. It's a good job and I'm one of the lucky ones. But not all my colleagues have had the opportunity to launch their own business. Some have become taxi drivers. Port Gentil is Gabon's most expensive city, so you'll understand that trying to live here amidst the crisis is really not easy. Port Gentil is considered a bastion of Gabon's opposition. Yet the city is also on the front line of a charm offensive, led by the outgoing president, Ali Bongo. Huge construction projects litter the landscape. A road, thousands of homes, and even a stadium are all under construction. So the bridge starts here. You're going to see how monumental this construction site really is. This is really one of the main infrastructure achievements of our Ali Bongo Ondimba seven years presidency. He made this region one of his main priorities. His reasoning was that the port region has been providing so much to the rest of Gabon that it was time the rest of Gabon gave something back to port <laughs> this construction project in the middle of a mangrove swamp was once dismissed as impossible. It's hoped that the Chinese-built road will open up Port Gentil to other parts of the country, weaning it off its dependence on petrol income by diversifying its economy. For this pro-government lawmaker, it's another argument in favour of Ali Bongo's candidacy. What you see here is something visible, something concrete. This is one of the cornerstones of our presidency electoral campaign, because this project is going to help connect our city of Port Gentil to the wider region, but also to the rest of Gabon. Considering this, I believe the people of Port Gentil can only support, can only concur with our president's vision. Here, the electoral contest has been boiled down to a duel between Ali Bongo and his opponent, Jean Ping. Port Gentil is considered Ping's stronghold. He was once at the heart of the regime and enjoyed close relations with Ali Bongo's family. He's now the president's main rival. 
the opposition's only candidate can be sure to count on the city's rebellious youth for support. Young voters like Octavio, eager for change. Gabon is not a monarchy. We want a radical change. We're fed up with hearing the name Bongo. Enough is enough. It's been nearly 50 years of Bongo. We the youth dream of a better future with Jean Ping. We hope he will try and erase or at least reduce the plight and suffering that is ours. Take me for instance, I'm 22. I have a diploma, but I can't find work. In my eyes, there won't even be a showdown between the two candidates. Jean Ping is going to win by a landslide. In the streets and alleyways of Gabon's economic capital, Ping supporters are getting ready for an electoral showdown. The city has been the scene of post-electoral violence in the past. Now the wait is on, as Gabon gears up for a presidential vote that's nothing like the others. For more on this, let me turn to our guest, security expert and professor of geopolitics, Emmanuel Dupuis. Hello, thank Hello. you for being with us. Uh, is this clearly a duel between Ping and Bongo, as we heard at the end of that report? It is now, uh, because at the beginning of the electoral process, which was very short, by the way, because it started officially 13 days before the end of the election today, uh, this night, there were 11 candidates, as you mentioned. Uh, 14 candidates, by the way, at the beginning, and 11 now. Uh, but now it is clearly a duel because three of the most prominent members of the opposition, of the National Union Party, uh, have linked and have gathered their forces uh, to uh, present an alternative to President Bongo. So it is clearly a duel. But it is not clearly an oppositional duel, I should say, because both of the, po of the, of the candidates, uh, Ali Bongo and his political party, the party which his father created in 1968, Democratic Party of Gabon and the opposition party National Union uh, share a common history because they've been ruling for this country. And I, I'm turning back to your reportage saying that the youth is fed up of 50 years of Bongo system. But the opposition, Jean Ping, and is, uh, is, 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 now, is now partners, uh, Endama, former chairman of the National Assembly, Casimir Oyemba, former prime minister, uh, Leon Paul and Kouladia, former head of the intelligence, are related to the Bongo family. And Goulakia is the cousin of Ali Bongo. Uh, uh, Jean Ping used to be the, uh, step, the uh, son-in-law of Omar Bongo because he was in couple with the sister of Ali Bongo, Pascaline Bongo. So they're all part of the same system. So the idea uh, uh, in which there is an alternative, in which there is a sort of radical change between the two is on my point of view, not really a reality. Now, the uh, issue of the uh, scrutiny lies in the position of the youth, in which, uh, uh, for which you have to take in consideration that 62% of the population has less than 24 years. 50% of the population of the one and eight hundred million uh, inhabitants of this country does not have the right to vote because they are under 18. And of course, uh, the dilemma uh, which has to, uh, which is cursing the opposition, uh, lies in the fact that the opposition at the beginning wanted to boycott and did not push the youth to uh, go and to have uh, a, a say in this meet, in, in this electoral process. So really, the reality is whether or not the youth would be mobilized and whether or not they will choose the uh, an, an alternative to uh, President Ali Bongo's uh, mandate taking consideration that Ali Mongo is 57 and all of the candidates have more than 70 years old. So they cannot decently say that they are so close to this youth, which is unemployed and which is, again, burdened by the economic crisis linked to the uh, oil crisis in general. Now, as you're saying, there's little to defer the, the two camps one from another to differentiate the two uh, as they are both linked either to Bongo Jr. or Bongo Sr. Uh, it seems that the only opposition, the radical opposition, is among supporters. Is violence unavoidable? What's being done to, to avoid post that is a, clashes? That is a major risk, and this is exactly what happened in the 19, 2009 elections uh, when there was a very strong look from outside, France, United States, European Union, saying whether or not uh, the uh, problem, the issue was 
for during the, 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 the scrutiny or after the scrutiny. So uh, what is a positive sign is that the National Electoral Committee has said that it will issue the results of the vote very shortly, which will diminish the risks of instability. The uh, electoral process and the results will be uh, presented uh, three days after the mandate. So therefore, it reduces a bit uh, the uh, risk of opposition. But of course, the last hours show us that everyone is uh, uh, um, g uh, grasping on their uh, local, uh, um, on their local, um, um, local uh, uh, legitimacy, uh, as the reportage mentions. And we should add that uh, Jean Ping is originated from Port Gentil. Port Gentil in 2008, Port Gentil this time will more or less be on the side of the opposition. But you have to take in consideration as well that uh, during uh, the last 10 to 15 years, there's been su su subsequent efforts to modernize the country. The reportage mentions bridges, roads, a sort of de uh, decentralization process, uh, and of course, bridging parts of Gabon, which were considered to be not sufficiently uh, uh, in link with the administrative capital. So there is a clear uh, legitimacy on the side of uh, Ali Bongo, uh, which has proposed and which has continued the politics of his father to bring Gabon to the emergency, to the um, state of uh, emergence. A, a, he has uh, uh, pursued and uh, uh, put more uh, legitimacy in uh, the process of Gabon emergency process towards 2025. But of course, uh, you cannot do the same, you cannot have the same ambition with a price of oil, which has been diminished by three in the last decade. Emmanuel Dupuy, thank you very much for having thank spoken you. to us. And that's where we're leaving this hour live from Paris. Stay with us. We'll have a full news update in just a few minutes.